what is up YouTube man? Today I got a Pro-Am gameplay against Joe Knows. We ended up matching up against their team in a best of three. I'm going to be showing you guys game one. It was the most competitive, the closest game we had the whole series. Let me know for the future if you guys want me to show you the whole best of threes, the whole best of fives against Comp Pro-Am games. Or if you just want me to show you guys the best game, the highlights, if I show you guys the whole series, it will make the videos long, you know, 45 minutes plus. But I love commentating the Pro-Am games, so if you guys love watching it, I'm definitely going to get that out for you guys. Now, I mean, looking at this team, there's probably some names you guys recognize. First off, there's me, there's Laker fan, GV, also known as Giuseppe, we got Dope Reality, and we got an extra nut. All YouTubers on Joe's team, we got him, we got Makery, Never Ready, they're both YouTubers as well. They got other comp players on their team. Everybody on the court is going to be a very competitive 2K player. So this isn't like Park where you can get lucky with the win. When it comes down to Pro-Am series, it's about which team executes better. Now talking about our defensive scheme, so we have, actually let me talk about the roles everybody has on the team first. So GV is going to be running point, he's going to be running pick and roll with Laker fan. Laker is on a 6 foot 8 big, you know how he likes to be, he's an undersized big that uses his speed to catch lobs, to get easy quick slips. We have an extra nut who is a secondary ball handler on the team. If he ends up getting the ball, then he can do his ISO. He can also run pick and roll with Laker. And then me and Dope are the locks on the team. Dope guards ball. And with me, you're going to see I'm in a position on the court where I can always drop to stop people from getting easy buckets in the paint. I'm also trying to play lanes anytime they try to dot the corner or dot the wing. You guys will see throughout the gameplay. With Joe's team, he is running a five out set. He's on a build with double slash or takeover. So he's trying to get the easy dunks as quickly as possible so he can get his team takeover the fastest. Now he has been playing on a center for most of his pro-am runs. So I think this is one of his earlier games using this build, running this set. So you can definitely see that in the video. Also, when it comes to my team and Joe's team, we're all pretty new to pro-am. You know, some teams have been playing Pro-Am for four, five, six years, you know, basically since 2K1 has been out. But with everybody on this court, I mean, with my team, we don't even have free throw upgraded. I mean, we're scared to get fouled because we don't, we can't hit free throws. I mean, <laughs> when you're a park player, you usually don't worry too much about upgrading your free throw stat because all it does is give you a couple extra shooting badges. But we're all in the process of making builds for Pro-Am because we will be playing in the WR. Uh, you know, on the build I'm on right now, it's like an 88 overall. I only have a few badges, but I made this build specifically for Pro-Am. I needed a build that had steel, that had interior defense, that had block. Basically, once this build is maxed, I'm going to have 30 defensive badges. It's going to make me a defensive monster. I will be able to do everything on the court. The build I was using originally did not have any interior defense. And you can still get stops without interior defense. But if my main job on the court is going to be defense, then I wanted a build that could do it the most efficient, blah, blah, as, as efficiently as possible right there. Laker getting an easy lob. That's going to be a big part of our offense and a big part of a lot of teams' offense. You know, if people are giving you the slip, catching lobs is very efficient this year. Right here, V Quarantine, hitting them with the jab step. Dotting Gilo at the top. Now, this man was really good with his curry slides, really good with getting his shots off. He was the main ball handler on Joe's team before Joe ended up making this build and being the primary ball handler. So they also have two people on the court that can make a play off the dribble. The more the more people you gotta worry about on defense is uh I mean it makes it tough, you know, because we're trying to get the ball out of Joe's hands, but if it ends up in that dude's hands, then he can make a play himself. Right here, it's six to eight, pretty close. They are also pressing on the defense. We're not going to be pressing too much just because our scheme doesn't allow for it yet. We're going to be working on that. Right here, this is just beautiful offense. They collapse on Laker on the row. He dots me in the corner. I shoot a white for my first shot, but it is going in. I have an 81 three-pointer on this build because it has max wingspan. 81 three-pointer, you know, I was a little bit worried about it at first, but if you guys are wondering if that is high enough to hit threes consistently, it is definitely high enough to hit threes consistently. In this game, you guys are going to see, I don't even think I miss a shot. Now, I am shooting spot-up shots. It's probably not the best shot to, you know, be shooting limitless, creating your own shot. But for a spot-up build, an 81-3 is plenty. Now, we give Joe a roll on the other end. Like I said, it is just tough. Good teams are going to find a way to get twos, to get threes. When it comes to Pro-Am, you don't want to give up anything too easy. I know if you play Park, if you're playing threes, if you give up a two, it's not the end of the world because you can get a three on the other end. But if you, get, you, blah, blah, if you give up free twos all day on Pro-Am, it's going to be a long game for you. So you got to try to make them work for whatever. A lot of the times, I'm going to say right here too, 
A thing that you won't really expect from a lot of other teams, but they do it. Joe will give G-Lo the ball, and then he will set a pick for him and roll, kind of playing as a... Uh, I mean, what's the word? It's kind of like a big and guard on a pick and roll, but Joe's build is six foot seven, so he can do plays like that. Right here, this guy's an LT posting me up. We end up missing a rotation, give up a wide open three. That hurts. This build also with interior defense, I can't be posted up. Now, there's not too many post scores in the WR. There's not a whole lot of pro MTs that run a post score, but we have matched up against a couple teams that do. So anytime that a team has a post score, I'm going to be on him 100%. GV right here. I mean, before the blinders patch, you can get shots off like that. He is a point guard. He's got a quick jump shot. But ever since they patched blinders, it's really tough to get an open look. So a lot of the times, you'll see both teams end up taking a shot that they're like, well, that looks like a pretty decent shot, but it ends up being like 50, 60% contested right there. You know, people dropping. Joe saw it. Joe is really good at driving and kicking. He's really good at finding the open man. A lot of guards that play in the WR, that play Pro-Am, they're shoot first guards. They're looking for their shot. I would say Joe is more of a drive and kick player, more of a look for his teammates before his own offense. Honestly, his play style, he's trying to get an easy two and then dot his teammates for the threes to get takeover right here. You know, he does it behind the back. I go up there for the contest. It's 32%. You even see I get a good shot contest. That is a little bit of me not having all my defensive badges. It's a little bit of luck as well. I mean, if somebody hits a contested shot, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just unlucky. You just got to keep going. You can't let the momentum of the game, you know, get sucked out of you just because somebody hits a contested shot. You just got to say good D, continue right there. Again, GV wanted to take that shot. That is a blinder shot, but it may have been contested. Not right here running the show. Like I said, he's the secondary ball handler. Not has a really big player. He's able to do some unique plays. And also, you know, he does his spin backs. He gets threes on those. Right here, you're going to see a big play. I'm in the corner. Joe doesn't think I'm going to drop down. But boom, get that out of there, man. Big blocks like that are what I'm here for. You know, take his takeover down a little bit. You may be thinking that's just one block. That's not a momentum swinger. Why are you getting so hyper, man? But listen, if Joe gets a dunk, that's going to boost his takeover. If he ends up getting team takeover, then a whole bunch of them have block takeovers. A whole bunch of them have shark takeovers. That can get out of hand really quickly right here off the inbound. I go for the oop. It's not there. They have really big players on GV. He has a point guard right now. He's going to be playing on another point guard because without, I mean, I'm going to be honest. His build right now, he does not have bullet passer Hall of Fame. And when you do not have Bullet Passer Hall of Fame, it really hurts you in the Pro-Am scene. People are really good with rotations. People are able to play lanes. Ghost contests are a huge thing. So you have to be able to get the ball as fast as possible so you can get an easy shot off. You see right here, they're doubling off the pick and roll. He gets bumped, unfortunately. If not, that would have been an easy lob. Not with it now. Look at this, man. I mean, even though his build looking kind of chunky, he's still able to move pretty fast with it. Shoots a fade. That is a pretty decent shot. They did patch fades a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he can make that most of the time. Just unfortunately gives him a white. Giuseppe right here stuck in the corner against Joe. There's not really too much anybody can do. And when he gets that matchup, he's definitely going to go at it. Now, we do a really good job rotating. We end up, uh, you know, having somebody there. He gets an ankle breaker on GV. That usually ends up being a free two. But luckily, we're able to get a contest. Laker with the with the rebound, but a lot of times if you get a rebound in this game, people are gonna press X immediately. It's a very good way to get a steal. And I mean they're on top of that, as you can tell. They got a steal, they call timeout immediately. We probably need to be able to do that a bit of, a bit more, you know, especially with my build with a lot of steel on it. Whenever somebody gets a rebound, I probably should just see if I can get the rip immediately. Call a timeout right there. You know, just unfortunate. I played a little bit too low right there. Not too low. I, I, I was too high. I didn't get in the right position. I didn't get a good contest. He gets a free dunk off of it. GV right here getting the man to jump. Gets his space. Shot 17%. I mean, if you, go, if you guys go back and look at that. That looked like a wide open shot, and they still got a 17% contest. That's what I'm talking about with the post blinders badge. It just makes it tough right here. I end up getting on Joe. I go for the reach. I thought he was going to go up for a dunk, so I was going to try to poke that out of his hands. If it's a situation where he drives, I just need to follow him because a lot of times he's going to try to just take the ball back out, set up another ISO right here. We're trying to make it really tough for him to get open dots to get into the paint easily and you see it's pretty much working i mean we're making them run the clock down most of the time now right here they shoot a fade i mean that's just unfortunate a lot of people in this game are gonna have a high midi a high three so the post fades are really good bailout options if you guys play pro-am and you didn't know about that anytime the shot clock is running low 
best thing to do is just go up with a post fade because, I mean, if anything, you might get a rebound out of it. If you just end up taking a 100% get tested, you know, standing midi, it's going to be way off with a post fade. It's a lot harder to get a get test right here. I mean, I thought I played that lane pretty well. I honestly went for the steal. I missed it. He ends up getting an open shot out of it. Now, I mean, open is a, uh, is a, is a, I mean, it's a way, I mean, because think about this, think about this, think about this. You'll take an open shot, but some people will still have Intimidator pop up. Is it really open? I don't know. He definitely could have hit that. Thank goodness he didn't. Throwing a turnover right here. I would say one of our weaknesses right now in the game are turnovers. I mean, it's just tough, man. Everybody's got steal. Everybody's got interceptor. They're really putting pressure on the guard to make the right play. And even if you do make the right play, they might be able to get a steal anyway. Right there on the transition defense. I mean, I should have stayed up. It's kind of tricky. We're all trying to get back to our rotations. Definitely something we got to work on. You just don't want to leave anybody open. You don't want to leave any spot open. And sometimes, especially in transition, on the confusion, that is the best time to get an easy three, an easy two. Maybe somebody's going to be wide open. When it's just regular half-court defense, you'll see with both teams, it's kind of hard to make anything happen. Right here, Joe has his takeover, so we got to be really careful right here. I mean, good shot contest. I feel like I get there, but that slashing takeover is just something crazy. With interior defense, with block, I mean, even then, you're not going to get a stop. Now, hopefully, once I have all 30 of my defensive badges on this build, I'm hoping I'm able to get a little bit more resistance against plays like that, even if they have slashing takeover. But I mean, it is 2K21 next gen. Contact dumps are just going to be a normal thing. And you just have to live with playing the best defense you can. Even if that means you're not going to get a stop. Right here, he's still got slashing takeover. So you know he wants to go for it. Now, Nuts build has interior defense. So in a situation like this, we're trying to get him in front of Joe. I can, I can, I'm still going to try to drop down if I'm able to. But with, um, with Dope's build, he has more of a perimeter style. He doesn't have interior defense. He has blocks, so if he gets a good block, that's going to be big. But it's going to be more important to have somebody with interior defense on somebody with slashing takeover. Right here, 25 to 30. Close game so far. I mean, right here, a beautiful dot to the corner. I'm ready for it. Big three. Got to be in, in situations like me, dope nut when he's spotting up. You got to be ready because for a split second, they might leave you open. That's when you're going to get the ball. That's when you got to take the shot. Again, I'm there. I'm there for the block. Maybe I should have been a little bit lower. But he gets it. I get good shot and test. It's just tough, man. I feel like I'm playing great D, not being rewarded right here. I mean, it's uh, it's just one of those funny fouls. Laker ends up getting knocked over. Usually you think those are going to be illegal screens, but they end up getting a foul. Now, I was talking about this earlier in the video. We do not have free throw rating on most of our builds. Once we all get our new builds, we're going to have more of it. But Laker is trying to free throw aim in. 2K Lab said that was the most efficient way, but I feel like it was patched because we've been doing that and it has not been working. Get an easy lob. 1.7 seconds left right here. All we need to do is all we need to do is make sure they don't get any crazy two, you know, to have momentum going in. And as you can see, I mean, I'm shooting two for two. Laker fans got six points. Pretty well balanced scoring. Joe's got 12. Quarantine's got 11. Nobody is really taken over on either team. Both teams are playing pretty efficient offense. Both shooting good from three. We have a couple more turnovers than them, and that's honestly the only reason they have the lead. Just a good competitive game. And a lot of the times, I will say, Pro-Am games, they're going to be close the whole way out. You're not usually going to go on a run where you score, you know, 20 points and the other score. The other team scores five because a good offensive team is going to find a way to score right here. Laker fans got the slashing takeover now. He wants to go right at this man. G Low gives it back to GV. Nut with the cut. Ryman accidentally goes out to the three. Definitely wanted it. I'm open in the corner. Unfortunately, GV just tried to pump fake. That would have been an easy three for us, but it makes it go up. They get the ball. Like I said, G-Lo, man, he's really good with the ball. You never know when he's going to post fade. You never know when he's going to curry slide. But they end up getting the steal. Nuts going in for the lob. Bang, as it should have been, but bounces off the rim. I'm going to the corner. It gets knocked into the hoop, man, and we get an easy two points. The craziest play you're going to see all game is that right there. I mean, in all the pro -M games I've played this year, that has only happened once. There was another team that ended up throwing a lob and it goes in. It's just funny how those work. And just like that, man, it's 32-32. The ball game is anybody's at this point. Nobody has taken off. Another thing really quick. I do get live commentary. Let me know if you guys would prefer a live commentary game or if you guys like the post commentary like I'm doing here or maybe you guys want to mix. I'll do whatever. I'll probably try a couple videos, see which one takes off more. 
but just a terrible shot right here. I mean, what can you do? You don't want to be in a situation where you're not taking jump shots. So the fact that GV is still trying to get open, still trying to take threes, bodes well for us because if somebody stops shooting and then, you know, the floor becomes a lot smaller, it's tougher to get off those easy corner helps. It's easy to stop the rolls if somebody's not wanting to shoot. So at a certain point, you know, you just got to keep shooting it right here. That man is definitely living by that. He takes a fade. Like I said, post fades are really tough to contest. And here they foul Laker on the fast break. Now something they do that we do not do that we need to add into our arsenal is fight is not fighting, man. That would be that would be a bad look. But fouling people on the fast break. If you let somebody just go on a fast break, they might get an easy two, they might get an easy three. But if you foul them, you know it stops everything. You get the half court defense set where you can have rotations, where you can make sure everybody's back because it doesn't matter how well your rotations are. If they got four people back and you got two, you're not going to be able to rotate to stop that. Right here, a beautiful dot. But it also comes with its downsides. It does get you closer to the penalty quicker. It does give you, you know, maybe you didn't notice you had four fouls. You get a fifth foul. Now you got to play very carefully. It is tough to decide when you need to foul, when to not foul. You guys know. And if somebody's way in front of you, you can't foul or you'll get a clear path. They'll get two shots and you'll get the ball right back. Right there again, man. I felt like I was there. Really good defense. The box score for me this game is not really going to show how well I played. I feel like I should have got way more stops. It's just unlucky. Man, the 30 defensive bats just cannot come soon enough right here. GV with a beautiful display. A couple curry slides gets to the mid-range. I feel like getting to that mid-spot and taking the shot is really big, especially for point guards, because if you have a sharp takeover, that's going to help you get that. Yes, you can go for the dunk. Yes, you can go for the layup, but he's really small. He can get blocked on those, and the mid-range shot is going to give him more takeover compared to taking a layup or a dunk. Now, right there, pretty much wide open shot. Misses it. We get the ball. We got to go in transition. Like I said, Nut is really good with these spin backs. He hits it. He does a curry slide. He goes into the paint. They rotate well. Lakers got it now. I mean, I would say he's got the smaller defender on him, but Joe is six foot seven. There's not really small defenders in this game. Now, you will play teams that have like maybe a 6'4 point guard with no defense, but a lot of the time it's going to, I mean, if, if they aren't able to hide somebody on the court with bad defense when they have four players on the court that have pretty good size, pretty good defensive stats, then they have failed as a team. Now, teams will start to go at the weakest defender. Uh, especially in WR matchups, if it's a series, if it's for money right here. You know, we're all just kind of chilling. We're just trying to get our sets. We're trying to test out what we can do right here. Laker gets the board. I was maybe open. I usually try not to call for the ball when I'm open too much because you don't want to be a backseat point guard when, you know, I mean, as I said, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of defenders, a lot of rotations. You don't want to call for the pass. You'd not be open. They get there and then they get a turnover because of it. So right here, man, <laughs> the free throw game. We might be the worst free throw shooting team in NBA 2K21 Next Gen Pro-Am. You know, he tries to aim in two, slightly left, 30%. It's just not going to work. Hopefully, I'm going to have I'm gonna have free throw. GV's going to have free throw. We're going to have another play with free throw. Hopefully, we'll just be able to keep the ball out of the hands of the bad free throw shooters on the team. I would love to see somebody try to do a hack-a-shack against our team because if they did, I'm not going to lie, it would probably work right here. A little bit of a broken play. We are up two, so we're just trying to keep the scoring going. It doesn't matter if we get twos. It doesn't matter if we get threes. You see, a lot of the time, they're just giving up that wide open roll. Laker comes back. It's not always the most pretty offense because Giuseppe and Laker don't really have that chemistry. They haven't really played together too much. The Pro-Am meta is different compared to other years with the Pro-Am meta, but hustle plays are going to be there. Six seconds, not doing what he does best, using his giant point guard to get a boost to the paint. That behind the back really propels you in pro-am i'm you know in the park it's not the biggest thing especially play twos but i feel like that's big when it comes to pro-am joe's doing the same thing right here i'm playing it i'm trying to get him to throw a turnover he throws it to the other corner it would usually hit off the back of the backboard it still does that a lot but i would say in next gen it does it a lot less frequently than it would i feel like in 2k19 2k20 if you ever throw a corner to corner it would always hit the top of the corner of the backboard go crazy me right here i'm trying to get the ball out of my hands like i said i have no playmaking badges if dudes decide to to try to reach on me when I have the ball it is definitely going to get poked a couple behind the backs right here step it back third quarter is in the all we need to do is make sure we get the last shot of the quarter and we're good 
and we get a nice two-pointer now. It's never over. I will say Joe has no fear. This team, they don't care about their field goal percentage. They are taking that last shot of the quarter, whether it's a good shot, whether it's a bad shot. We need to be prepared for it. Going into the fourth quarter, it is 42 to 34. We have a comfortable lead, but five minutes is a long time. We need to keep at it. We can't let up. This is big right here because if they score right here, they may think they have momentum. If we get a big clutch stop and then we got momentum, we can get this thing to double digits. A foul right there. You can't be mad out of it. If you think they're going to an easy score, sometimes fouling is the best thing to do. Joe hitting with the little triple threat. If you guys didn't know, you can break people very consistently off using the triple threat. Now he gets into the paint. I am there, man. Come on, 2K. Give me some contact. Not 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 a contact dunk, but give me a stop. I mean, can't do anything about it. He is a, I mean, he's got 95 driving dunk. It's just going to happen. I don't have all the badges, but I feel like I got there. Maybe a little bit quicker would have helped. Laker with the spin. The man loves to hit people with the spins. They are super effective. The animations where you would spin and drop the ball every single time. I feel like 2K has done a pretty decent job with that as well. It still happens, but not nearly as much. I feel like I can never do a spin layup in past 2Ks because it'd always be a body block. Now, we died for it right there. We are spamming timeout. Unfortunately, we just cannot get it. But, hey, man, a poke's a poke. A steal is a steal. Getting Joe's takeover down a little bit is going to help in the long run. Because if we can survive these last four minutes without Joe getting takeover, without his team getting takeover, it's going to help in the long run. Gets Crab right there. Dope with the amazing defense. Gets a 44% contest. Usually those kind of, you know, if you're Crab like that, usually it's open three. You can't do anything about it. But... When we should have had momentum off that, they get a steal, like I said. Just going for the steals quickly when they get the ball. I mean, even before the camera flips, like, even before the camera flips is big. GV with the cut to the paint. He did not mean to run out. He meant to just keep going, get a layup. 44, six points. We are back for the most part. This is one of those situations where maybe we should have fouled to kind of get our defense set up. You know, better sooner than later, we finally did it. Back in our spots, Joe at the top of the right key. Now, if he starts all the way up there, it's definitely harder for me to rotate up. Not sleeping a little bit at the free throw line. That is a deep shot. I'm not sure if the man has deep threes Hall of Fame, but you can shoot pretty far with deep threes this year. You know, hot spots go back pretty much at the hash, but people still shoot behind the hash, even if they don't have a hot spot popping up. It's crazy. I did not expect it. Now it's only a three-point game with three minutes left. We're kind of, we're losing the momentum. We need to get it going. Laker with the post. Dottie GB, four seconds left. Need to make something happen. Again, he is doing an excellent job this game of getting the crabs at the mid-range, getting something, getting those easy twos, getting this takeover meter up. I mean, you see 19.7 assists. Yes, you know, we got some turnovers, but it's just going to happen with a new team. He doesn't even know our icons. The positions we have, we're switching icons every game. They get a backcourt violation, though. That is huge. Now, if we score right here, it's going to put pressure on their defense to try to get turnovers, to try to get steals. We can play, you know, we can pretty much play the long game at this point, but he gets an easy steal right here. Goes up. We give up the and one. I mean, it just, ah, oh man, an and one is tough. He got a contact dunk out of it. Most of the time, that's not going to be an and one. You see the stats. I mean... Again, no one's taken over. He's got NA on his free throw, 75% chance. A lot of the Pro-Am people run NA on the free throws just because it's basically free points. Now, now you know, if we try to run uh, NA with our, uh, you know, 30 free throw ratings, that's definitely not going to be the way. But you see here, Laker fan dots me in the corner. They're leaving it. My third three of the game. Two of them are white, but hey, man, we will take it. That's big. Five points now. Two possession game. Joe with the curry slides. At this point, Dope is telling me to stay a little bit more at home in the corner. We don't want to give up a three with two minutes. I'm trusting him. You know, in the future, maybe we could rotate that a little bit better just so I'm there. Uh, you know, you don't really ever want to give up a free two, but it's crunch time now. Giving up a three would, I mean, it, it would just, it would hurt real bad right here, though. Swinging it to me, man. Back-to-back -back threes. Greens. Six-point game. I'm doing my thing out here. Huh, it feels good, man. There's nothing worse than it being a tight game and somebody misses an open three. I mean, it's happened before, but you got to be ready for those moments right here. A minute 38 left. They got to get a bucket right here. It doesn't matter what. He's working at the free throw line. Gives it to G-Lo. We already know he's going to run the pick and roll. Go to the paint. He ends up getting a two. That's not the worst thing in the world. A minute 30 left. As long as we score right here, let's see. I don't know, man. Let me know in the comments what you guys would do 
in this situation. Laker fan says, let's just get the quick two. Put pressure on them. Again, six points is a two-possession game. We got to make them waste time, and we got to make them take the two. Joe coming down right here. I really want to help, but again, man, it's there's such little time left. You don't want to give up a corner three in this situation, so we're just letting it happen. 114. We make sure to have an extra nut down there because they are pressing the the uh, pressing the full court i mean it's really tough as it because i mean how, how do you explain it you know it's just oh laker man with the standing lob he misses it though probably one of the most clutch rebounds of the game but if they're pressing they can just double team the point guard because then he's got to pass it to laker maybe laker doesn't want the ball in his hands now laker does have playmaking in his build so it definitely helps with breaking the press bank right there we'll we'll work on it any pro heads in the comments i mean let me know what your guys opinion are of the press break how you guys break it right here we end up blowing that opportunity it's a four point game gotta get a big stop right here gv ends up fouling that is our one at this point we cannot foul anymore 16 seconds left like i said you know maybe if we give up a two it's not the worst thing in the world but if we get a stop that's pretty much gonna seal the game joe working he's definitely looking for one of us to leave the shooter so we cannot do it we just gotta let joe Keep him on an island. Gives it to G-Lo right here. Two seconds left. He does a little spin shot. 100% smothered. And at that point, man, that is ball game. You're going to see everybody starts quitting, uh, you know, after, after this play right here. But everyone's going to quit the game because in Pro-Am, if you don't quit in private matchmaking, you will lose overall. So every single game, you're going to see everybody quitting at the end. But let's see, man. 22 seconds left. They need a big play right here to seal the game. Maybe, you know, two or three, it does not matter. They can play the foul game. They know we have bad free throw shooters. 15 seconds left. It gets to G-Lo. Don't want to give him the open three. Ends up taking a contested midi. 40% contested. 11.4. Give it to GV. Now, all this talk of us not having great free throw shooters, G is the one that actually does have a great free throw rating on his build. So, I mean, this is big, man. These are the moments. You can't choke these. He's got timing on. 69% chance of that going in. But, hey, man, it drops in right here. Big greens. 5.6 seconds left. Nothing much. I mean, nothing crazy. What we don't want to do right here, and we're saying this in the party, do not jump at a three-point shooter. Because if they hit the three-pointer and one, I mean, that's overtime. That is... Uh, you know, the biggest mistake. If anything, make him take it too. That's exactly what Joe does right here. 54, 56, 3.5. I mean, like I said, they were just going to play the foul game. It only takes them about half a second to foul us. So their foul game, they, they were definitely ready. They didn't waste a second. They already were making sure to have intentional foul on. And then right here, seals the game. 54, 58, 2.8 left, man. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. This is Sonic. I will catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.